Hi everybody, this is Marcia Fervienza. I am here with the fantastic astrologer Susan Miller. She's the owner and founder of astrologyzone.com and the creator of the app Astrology Zone that you can find on iOS, uh, Apple and Android. Mm -hmm. She's the one who writes the amazing forecast, monthly forecast for every sun sign. That one that gets you ready to do everything and make big decisions mm -hmm. in your life so you won't get it wrong. So she was so kind to give me like two minutes of her time to tape this quick video <laughs> where I just wanted to uh, talk to her a little bit. I am so curious about um, the, the amount of work we know about the amount of work you put into writing the forecast. Well, I have to do the, the math first. And so I, I'm probably most well known for my monthly which is also on my daily horoscope app. And it can run 2,500 to 3,500 words. And I have to do all the geometry because that's what astrology is, geometry of the planets. I'm looking to how they talk to each other. Almost like at a party. You might go in and see eight people, eight planets, eight people, and two more people come the sun and moon. They're not planets, but the luminaries and you see oh there's three people talking over here are they getting along yes oh beautifully oh but those two people are arguing and that person's looking out the window and I have to make sense of all the actions that the planets are doing that month and it's amazing how well you translate that into a conversation that it's so easy to understand and easy for us to put that, you know, to our real lives. Well, you know, most astrologers talk to each other. That was never my goal. I wanted to talk to real people who may have never thought about astrology, didn't know what it could do, didn't know anything about it. So I never used technical terms. And because I write for the magazines, I'm well schooled in how to speak to people in a clear way and not use jargon or difficult words. If I do use a word that I think people won't understand, then I define it. I have to be careful not to use American idioms. It was funny, I was having lunch with a, a, a young girl from China and I said, well, after this happens and you have difficulty and you have to get up and get on the horse again. She said, what is that get on horse? <laughs> and I, a very cowboy American. I said, well, maybe it means you have to, you fell off the horse, you gotta get back on and you have to finish your ride. And if you're jumping, you have to jump and not be afraid. <laughs> This American idiom, get yes. back on the horse. <laughs> oh my God, I'm still learning them as I live here. I'm well, I want to learn them. the idioms of other cultures because they're very insightful. We have so many in Brazil. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, we have uh, so many. Oh, you have to tell me so. I will. <laughs> and, it's, and it's amazing that you have the, you have the, the monthly forecast and you still have a summary. And when mm -hmm. I go and I read the summary, I get more information yes. and different information. Well, I'll tell you about that. I write the summary three months ahead, and then I don't look at it. And then I write the meat and potatoes of the month, the long part. But the summary is about 600 words. And sometimes I'll say, oh, I didn't tell Scorpio about their new apartment that they could have. But I have nowhere to put it. I don't want to disturb the ribbon and the flow. So I say to myself, okay, I'll leave it in the summary. At least they'll know about it. And hopefully they read the top and the bottom. I read it all. <laughs> I don't leave anything out. <laughs> and uh, now, Susan, um, how, how, how is it for you that our free will mm -hmm. can play with the astrology? I, I love that question because there's so much misinformation. First of all, every religion is based on the same premise. You must take responsibility for your actions. And in astrology, you can't blame a planet. Like, why did you steal your neighbor, neighbor's pig? Oh, Saturn was on my sign. But no, people no. do that all the time, don't they? They try well, to do that. Not so much anymore, but 
really they can't blame a planet right you have to say I was a bad person because I stole my neighbor's pig or I went out with my neighbor's wife I'm just a bad person. Yeah, <laughs> you know? exactly. The planets don't make you do anything. I could tell you, when is your birthday, for example? January 24th. Oh, Aquarius. Of Aquarius. Course you are. <laughs> <laughs> so, you have Jupiter in the house of fame and honors. You could get a big job this year between now and November, beginning of November. But let's say you just had a baby. And let's say you moved to a new city. You had to get a bigger house. And I tell you about this job possibility. You may say, I can't do any more than I'm doing now. I'm unpacking boxes. I'm taking care of a little infant. My husband has a new job. I don't want a new job right now. So you're, you don't have to look for it. You don't. If you wanted something part-time, then that same aspect will help you. But, and you will meet some very high level people and you might want to join a club. Let's say you were in the film business or whatever business, real estate. You join a club so that you're still in the community and you're meeting people, but you say, I'm taking a break while my child is just an infant and we're getting settled in our new house. But you don't have to do anything I tell